A flock of people have already gathered in the mansion's front yard by the time you officially open the doors. Not sure whether I should feel baffled or underdressed standing in their presence. Men and women of wealth and status, all dressed to the nines in fancy suits and lovely dresses of varying colors, compose the medium sized crowd. Their necks, arms, and fingers are adorned with silver and gold glinting in the afternoon sun. Some even have ridiculously fancy feather hats on their heads. Like, what's wrong with them? <laughs> I really hope there aren't any magpies living nearby like in the stories. Those birds will have a field day in this. They are murmuring among themselves, looking at the estates facade appraisingly with some arguing about whose mansion has the superior architecture. But most of it stops as Rose calls for their attention. They don't look too pleased at being ordered around, but what can they do about it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'm Rose Cooper and this is my partner, Isabella Santos. We'll be taking a tour of the mansion in two groups. Please make sure you've filled up our sign-in forms before joining a specific group. Those who want to look around the first floor, please follow my partner. I'll be guiding the ones who wish to see the ground floor. Hearing this, a few wondered to me. There are mostly old ladies who seem daunted at the idea of climbing all those stairs. Miss Makola also joins our group, but what really catches my eye is the ele elegantly dressed pair as she approaches. It's so nice to finally meet you! When Chief Inspector Lee mentioned that a famous interior designer is in town, I knew I had to get you! You're... Confidence in my skills is very flattering, ma'am. I'm sure you won't disappoint, Marianne. Oh, you know each other? Not at all, ma'am. You mentioned something about a Marianne on our way here, darling? Oh, yes, I think I did. That was a bit strange. Oh, they must be the clients she was talking about. They're probably going to buy the thing if they have money, I guess. I might have seen their faces somewhere before. Some magazine? Or a television? I can't quite remember. Then again, most of our guests have likely ended up on the news one way or another. I won't be surprised if these two already have. For people who are popular, though, they aren't dressed as loudly as the others, and in their simplicity, the couple stands out. The woman in particular is stunning enough to turn the heads of most people in my group, especially the men with wandering eyes. The guy standing beside her doesn't seem to mind though. Hmm. Okay, well. And I, I'm going to be a bit bolder with my assumptions, I'd say he's basking in the attention. Both of them, in fact. I think they are brother and sister if it wasn't for their public display of affection. The matching rings on their fingers just cement the fact that they are indeed a couple. Whatever. Couple or not, what's important is we get this deal closed before the current owners can even think of counseling the listening. I just hope one of the people in my or Rose's group is brave enough and generous enough to buy this mansion. I mean, they are most likely, <laughs> since they already have bought it. And so, with papers in hand, I lead the way. Okay, uh, we got a journal. Meeting the couple, I guess. Uh, today marked an open house at the infamous Ermengard. Ermengard Mansion. Opened to the public for the first time in years, Luxborn's most esteemed uh, and prominent personalities gathered to catch a glimpse of the 7th century property, including Luxembourg's most well-known couple, Luke and Hannah Wright. Okay, so they're Luke and Hannah. I think I saw her on both of them, maybe, in the personality the relationship thing. Hannah, yeah, and Luke. Okay. <gasps> Going to be playing as them too. Where's this? Oh no! 
<laughs> no spoilers. <laughs> All right, good thing they warned me. Kudos. They aren't whispering among themselves or gooing. Oh, and ah, of one thing or another, they ask questions. From how the restoration process went to the history of the place, I answered them all. More than happy to talk about the art pieces and architecture mostly. Wait, 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 wait a second. Oh, wait, okay, I'm just gonna. There we go. It kind of looks like them, doesn't it? Uh, the couple? That's odd. Look, it kind of does, doesn't it? I mean, obviously, they were like. Oh my gosh, they're old demons. These, This couple, they're like 500 years old or whatever. I don't remember which century it was. 600? I don't remember. Not important. <laughs> That's probably not the case. I'm just saying. Oops. Um, I mean, yeah, okay, I can't get a better picture of them right now. Hopefully they will stand in the scene. Uh, I don't... It kind of looks like them. I'm just saying. Okay. Okay. We got some ghost stuff going on, so why not? However, I'm careful not to mention anything about the urban legend. That's what we want to know about, right? Not a good material for sales talk, and if the entire population of Luxembourg knows about it, some of the furnishings here are actually the 17th century originals, all of which have undergone a painstaking restoration process just to return its original beauty. Even the glass... things. Yes, thank you. Colorful ones. Oh, I don't know, but you get the idea, I hope. Oh, even the glass thing, colorful ones. This? This? With a couple? With you in the picture, you mean? <laughs> I'm just kidding. But, oh, look, even, like, the hair... It's more golden and he's more blonde, like more on the platinum and blonde side, which was also true for the couple, I think. Pretty sure his his hair is lighter. Is this like their ancestry or some crazy stuff? <laughs> Maybe. That's also weird. No. No, that can't be right because then they're. <gasps> it's incest. Okay, I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, I'm just getting way ahead of myself. All right. Uh, yeah, this is strange. Uh, Especially that one, ma'am. It is said to be a gift commissioned by the fiancé of Lady Charlotte Ermengarde. The mansion's current owners have specifically requested that the restoration crew take great care in handling it. It's a priceless work of art and the most distinctive feature of the mansion. So strange. By the time I stop talking, her attention is already elsewhere. Ugh. Annoying. Isn't this place wonderful, darling? I told you it's not a total waste of your time. Same I don't know. Her. Isn't it's it a later. bit too small? We might have to break a wall down to have more room. Well, I think it is just right. Don't you think so, Marianne? It is splendid, Mom. Okay, I just have to say this. Of course you think it's just right. You got your freaking self-portraits in the house already. In a freaking glass. <laughs> like, what is going on? This is so weird. And see, his hair is lighter. And her is more This is weird. <laughs> okay. The journal got. Did we get an entry? I think I saw an entry. No. Was it a personality thing? I saw something. Okay, weird. Well, uh, whatever. I'm but telling you. Isn't that. it a little too early to make plans when no deal has been signed yet? Never mind that. It isn't going to be a problem. We've got a wonderful legal team to handle everything. Start taking notes, though. I think I've got a few things I want changed before we move in. Like what? The rest of our conversation gets lost in the shadow of our companions. And who are those people? The other ones? The old ones? I don't want to make my assumptions yet, but their sheer interest is enough to give me some semblance of hope. Oh, please, please, please let these guys be the one. Let me out of here. <laughs> Take the letter with you guys. Eventually, our group reaches the kitchen. A nice kitchen. Much like the rest of the house, a great deal of effort has been put in retaining the room's classical appeal. The open hearth heat up in a room in particular looks amazing, like the ones I've only seen in fairy tale books. And a mad pro 
props to clean crew. Seriously, after overhearing hundreds of their complaints about the soup and tar staining the bricks and how much of the paint and ours cleaning is, they'll be still managing to pull this off. They still managed to pull it. I'm sorry, I'm reading it a bit carelessly. <laughs> I had so much time to read the sentence or make it look presentable at least. The highlight of the room, however, is what's underneath this hatch here. Oh, don't say anything yet. An underground wine cellar. This is the first time the guy in gray speaks up, Mr. Luke Wright. My memory supplies from the forms they signed earlier. His sudden attentiveness catches me off guard. Since the start of the tour, only his wife has shown any form of genuine interest in the place. He's just a drunken fool or something, I don't know. But this time, something lights up in his eyes as at the mention of the undercroft. What's so interesting about a basement? I really don't understand rich people sometimes. Ugh, rich people are dumb. Right now, it just gives me the impression of a child who has seen what he absolutely wants for Christmas. I always found it cute whenever I see children act that way. My younger siblings, especially. On a grown man, though? It's almost funny. Yes, sir! It could house around 7,000 to 11,000 bottles of wine. Dang. Truly! And the room? How was it built? The bricks that were used to build the cellar have been carefully picked for the purpose of maintaining and preserving a constant temperature and humidity in the room. It's a good place to keep your private collection in, if you have one, sir. It keeps the corks in good condition. Oh, love. Didn't you say before that you wanted to make your own personal vineyard? What you do? Perhaps you could start one here. <laughs> you know we're going to need space for that, darling. It's like, ugh. And this isn't big enough? If it's space you're worried about, sir, the Ermengarde Mansion sits on a 46-acre lot. There's plenty of room for it. We were told that the original owners had a horse stable built here before, too. There's a contemplative expression on Mr. Wright's face, but he doesn't say anything further. His wife, however, seems really pleased that you guys started to show interest, if only a little. I smile to myself. I may not completely understand how these people's mind works, but I sure as hell know how to spot a buyer with sincere interest. Score. I can't wait to tell Rose. As she went unlocked, the rest of the tour goes by without a hitch. After more than half an hour, we're able to cover almost every room in the ground floor and are heading to the parlor. Bunny, the first time BRC had a surveyed property, I kept complaining to Rose how big it is. No, I can't even bring myself to care no matter how much my feet hurt. How annoying to live in such a big place. Maybe this is just my excitement over a possible sale. Yeah, it's the more picture. Oh! Right here. What? What? I can't tell what the work is. Is saying, jeez, how creepy! Oh, this game is actually pretty creepy. Anyway, I was just going to point out again another portrait, and those two are also. Uh, this is a new guy, however. Mm, okay, I'll, we'll, we'll continue on oh, that. This spring is even worse when you're wearing headphones. Okay, when I reached the parlor, however, an odd feeling washes over me. Starts off as a small goosebumps in my skin, a feeling being washed intently. Whispers in my ear and shadows dancing lurk in the corner of my vision. She said, Help me. I don't know if you could hear, maybe my voice will be too loud. So, dark silhouettes that are gone when I turn to look. Yeah, it whispered, Help me. Like the letter. A chill that settles down my spine, making me feel sick, and I start to break out in a cold sweat. I I can't do this. I need to sit down for a moment. The old leaders in the group have been requested for a break anyway. If I can just... Excuse me? 
Everyone, we we will be taking a 15 minute rest here before we visit the first floor. In the meantime, please help yourselves to the refreshments and snacks we've prepared. If anyone has any questions, feel free to approach me. I'd be happy to help you. I let them sit while they retreat to a quiet corner to recover. It's not what you think. Don't think about it. It's not what you think. I probably just caught Becca's cold. Don't think about it. I'm left alone for a good while, seeing words spilling out of my lips in a silent prayer. <gasps> Until a hand taps my shoulder. Hello, you there? Y yes, ma'am. Oh, look at you! Having to show a group around a mansion this big must be exhausting. Not a problem, ma'am. I'm just doing my job. What a hard worker. Anyway, Isabel, right? Isabella, actually. But yes, what can I help you with, ma'am, right? Please, just Hana. Call me Hana. I just wanted to ask, how soon are we able to move in? My brain, brain completely stops, the sick feeling plaguing me is suddenly gone, replaced by utter bewilderment. Is this a joke? She looks at me expectantly as I struggle to come up with an answer. Wait, ma'am, I... you see... But we haven't even negotiated a price yet, ma'am. We haven't even finished touring the rest of the mansion. A sale would be great and all, but... She stops me from speaking any further and puts a hand on my shoulder. For a moment, with her tight smile, she looks as if she has tasted a particular sour lemon. Oh, please, sweetie, don't insult me. Money is not a problem. Good for and, you, I guess. just between you and me, this place is better off with us than with some old lady who will probably just fill it up with cats. I personally things. don't think there's anything wrong with having cats here, ma'am, Hana. I'm sure there's more than enough space here if you want pets. Perhaps I'm still not feeling well, but really, what's wrong with cats, exactly? <laughs> I have two cats. More importantly, why is she talking about moving in already? Well, I'm more of a dog person. But you see, this is going to be a gift to my darling. It's going to be our anniversary soon, and it would be so wonderful if you can secure its purchase for us. Why, I can even offer something extra if you help us out with the paperwork. I... we actually have a process for this, ma'am. I don't really think that would be necessary or appropriate. And just what are you two lovely ladies talking about here? Leaving me and our lovely interior designer to talk here by ourselves. <laughs> What would the people think, darling? Oh, it's just small talk, love. I was asking if she could help me with the paperwork. I try not to wince when he hurt nails digging to my shoulder. Ooh. I can't help but send an imploring look at Miss Cole. Ah, what did I say? I didn't have the time. <laughs> I don't know, was it like an update, but some, oops, excuse me? Was it like an update, but not something I can check? I guess, yeah, probably, because it's like an, a mark, I think. Yeah, okay, never mind. I'm curious about this, but I'll probably look through it after I've played through the whole game, I suppose. Maybe I'll play it more than once. I mean, since it seems to be a very big game, and I think it has a lot of endings, so if that's interesting, I probably will. <laughs> Otherwise, I'll just play by myself I don't know but I'll make sure to like have a different play for some other games if I continue to play this for a long time in case you're not interested in seeing like various different outcomes so I can't help but send an imploring look at Miss McCullough who only gives me an apologetic smile and a shrug uh, uh, yeah I can give you a fact sheet and a form to fill out she wastes no time in taking the papers from my hand and shovels through the brush. 
Oh man, Rose is going to be so angry at me for letting her do that. Wonderful! And Marianne, I'd really love to talk to you about those changes. You took some notes earlier, yes? I did, ma'am. But I really hope that this time... Excellent. Hopefully you can help us out too, Isabel. Isabella. Right, right. It's a lovely name, Isabel. Oh, uh, come on. It's Isabella. Yes, that's great. We'll be more than happy to put in a good word to your superiors too, and... What's this? Oh no! Achievement unlocked. Dealist horror prop. <laughs> That's the funniest achievement's name. Oh no! I'm just. I just need to prepare myself a little bit. That's why. Okay. Alright. Don't appear again. Disgusting feet. By the way, I don't think I've ever mentioned. It's not like a phobia anymore, but I really, I found feet so disgusting. And it really was a phobia when I was younger, when I was like 13, 14, but I'm a bit over it, you know, it's not like, it's not a big deal, but I still just, ugh, I don't like feet. I don't like looking at them. <laughs> okay. A look of confusion and disgust appears on her face, turning to her husband. He merely shrugs in reply. That's, uh, an interesting work of art. Not to my taste, though. I'm sorry. Darling, buttercup, art is a complete overstatement for this garbage. <laughs> it looks like a cheap prop from a D-list horror film. Ah, I see. <laughs> Shush, love. Let the girl do what she pleases with, uh, what do they call this? <laughs> do I think I oh, it? forget about it. At the very least, it's not as dreadful as the one art exhibit I was forced to attend last month. You should have seen it, Marianne. Even you would have been appalled. But I'm sure you'll know what to do with our walls once we get started. I highly doubt it is as bad as you say, ma'am. Nevertheless, you can be assured that my team will only pick whatever suits your tastes. Nothing of this chain letter sort, of course. Wait, how it has to always work here? with a palette. I'm quite sure chain letters these days don't come in this form. It's my turn to be puzzled. What did they mean? Rose and I double shicked everything. papers I handed not enough? I want to ask what I did wrong. I don't want to mess this up. But with the way ma'am Hannah is leading the conversation, I'm afraid that's exactly what will happen if I do interrupt her. That's good to hear. See, darling, isn't she an absolute delight to work with? I can't wait to see how this place will look when she's done with it. Oh, you don't have to tell me that, Buttercup. A smile is back in her face when she turns to me and hands me a strange piece of paper. I would still put it away if I were you, though. Otherwise, people might get the wrong impression. Anyway, as I was saying... I don't hear the rest of what she has after that. What she says after that. I can only stare down at the paper, at the letter in my hands. The sides crinkle in my grip, and my breathing goes labored. Dread quickly fills my mind. Isabella? Isabella? Are you alright? You're looking pale. I didn't even notice when Rose's group joined us in the parlor. I want nothing more than to say that. No, I'm not alright. I want to leave this place because I remember everything is clear as day. The, this letter and those blood-soaked limbs in the attics she did forget. It's real. The letter. I, I'm sorry. I didn't know. Careless. I've been so careless. 
do we even tell them that without looking like I've gone mad? Should I even tell them? Um, oh boy. <laughs> um, I'm thinking not. Ooh, this is hard. Uh, I mean, I was supposed to show this to five other people or else. So, I, I, do they die if I show them the letter or they, do they get cursed too? Because I didn't cuss stir? I don't know. <laughs> but she did like it professional, so that was probably why. The words are stuck in my throat. I want to tell her. I really do. But is she going to believe me? She already dismissed me earlier. That's true, too. It's a concussion, she said. It's not... There really is something in his house, in that attic, in that letter. It's going to go after us. Please, believe me. Dear me, is Isabella alright? Ma'am ha Hannah's voice breaks through the haze beginning to clog my mind. Rose is looking down on me, already etched on her features. I didn't even notice when she removed a wrinkled paper from my hands and pushed me down to sit in a nearby chair. Oh, so she's got a letter though. From the edge of my vision, I can also make out Miss Combs asking a passing food server for a glass of water. Through it all, Mr. Wright stands in the sidelines. Although curious, he appears more inclined to watch the scene than help. They are all as likely to believe as Rose does. To everyone, whatever's in this house is just a hoax, a cautionary tale for children. Isabella, do you need me to call that ambulance? She offers me a drink, but I push it away. I need to get out of here before I cause an even bigger commotion. Clear my head, take a breath of fresh air. Anything to take my mind off things. No one is going to believe me anyway. No, I'm just feeling a bit out of it. Excuse me, I'll be back. I just need to catch my breath. Bowing my head, I mutter a quick apology and gather my stuff to make a quick exit. It doesn't matter if this place is haunted or not. I've caused trouble and Rose can be quite unforgiving of behavior like this. I'm almost at the door when she catches up to me. Isabella, wait! The apprehension must have been quite obvious on my face because her expression instantly shifts to something gentler, eyes softer, a found smile spreading on her lips. Hey, I'm not angry. I know. I'm sorry I ruined this for you. Come on, you didn't ruin anything. It's not like we haven't ran into any problems before. If we don't get a deal today, we can always try on a different day. And... look. She has hesitates, completely trailing off before shifting her gaze down to her hands, a small gesture to stop. Her fingers are fiddling with a piece of folded paper. Oh no! <laughs> it's that stupid letter again. My hands shift in when she gives it back, but I take it nevertheless, more as an automatic response than any desire to have it back. How did it get there anyway? I'll throw it away if I can. But I have this nagging feeling that, one way or another, it will find its way back to me regardless of what I do about it. Rose, this is... You 
have to let them know about. I know you want us to get this sale so badly. And we've made a lot of plans on how to go about this. I mean, who wouldn't? This is the first time I've been assigned to a property like this. I've sold plenty of houses before, but nothing like what we have here. It's a beautiful house. I'd love to get one of my own if I ever win the lottery. But I think... Look, here's the thing, Isabella. If we are going to do this, work on something... I don't know, this... big. I need you in top shape. And the way you are now... My mind stops. What? Wait! No! I can still work! I just need to get myself together. That's what you said earlier. I let it go because I thought, hey, it's your own body and you should know more than anyone how you feel. But after this, I really think you should take a break. You're... you're kicking me out? No, I'm not. Look, all I'm asking is for you to take a seat somewhere I can see you and let me handle this for now. You're clearly not yourself, and I honestly could use some time not worrying when you'll fall over or not. The day's not even over, and I'm already feeling the stress. Please, humor me just this once. She claps her hand to get her in front of her. No, she's not. Eyes pleading for understanding. <laughs> I just have to, I'm sorry. And I do understand. To some extent. That doesn't mean I'll feel any less awful. Whatever, whether myself at the, the unlucky turn of situation, situations taken or for her. I promise I'll give you a full report of what happens after. I'll even let you take the lead tomorrow. Fine. Okay. I'll step aside for now. You're upset. A little, yeah, obviously. If it's any consolation, I won't tell the boss about today. You know how he is. Please, don't. I don't want a repeat of the lecture I got during my first assignment. He called me a noob, and I don't even know what that means! <laughs> in memory, we both burst into helpless giggles, earning a strange looks from the guests milling about the door. Talking and laughing like this, it's easy to forget any mishaps that happened. Little things you learn to appreciate. I so, guess. are we good? I'm still not okay with it, but... Rose has a point. It's better for me to step out of this one for now. I won't be able to help you anyways if I keep getting distracted like this. Maybe I'll just take a walk outside or something while I wait for you to wrap things up. Please, just stay put. I insist. I'm not an invalid, Rose. You clearly have not seen how you looked earlier. <laughs> it's not that bad. Color hasn't even returned to your cheeks yet. Just stay here, all right? Want to talk? <laughs> Don't even think of going anywhere. Let me finish what I'm doing here, and then I'll take you back to Luxembourg myself to have that minor bump checked. At least wait for me to call someone who will fetch you, okay? She's gone before I can voice one word of complaint. Left with nothing else to do, I find myself drifting back to the foyer. A few visitors linger in the area, some really enjoying the afternoon sunlight streaming through their stained glass window. Others can be seen admiring the priceless antiques decorating the room. One group of elderly gathered some ways across from me is occupied in a friendly venture about which one would cost more to buy. A little argument here and occasional laughter and teasing there. I smile to myself. The conversation reminds me of what I've been missing these past few months. Rose is probably right. I do need a break. Maybe this afternoon's hangout will help? Speaking of, I should call Ash. It's a few hours early from what I've told him, but he did ask for a call once I'm done. 
Besides, I don't have a ride back after, so I might as well take it. Or bribe him into giving me one. Not that he'll ever accept a letter, personal convictions and all. Honestly, if there's something I find admirable in him, despite his tendency to annoy the hell out of me, it's that. Okay, it sounds like she's got a crush on him, honestly. <laughs> well, whatever way works. A free ride is still a free ride. There's Rose who's off for her too, but despite what she says, I know she'll be busy for the rest of the afternoon, especially without me assisting. Bothering her for a favor as small as this is the last thing I want to do right now. A couple of minutes and a few prayers asking for this signal later, the call finally connects and... Shit! Stop bomb ash from Deluxe City! Bag of Shit, how loud is this thing even? Beat me. Looking for trouble? Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. <laughs> Stop bomb ash from Deluxe City! Bag as watch out? Can't beat me. Looking for trouble? Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. <laughs> Soft bomb ash from Deluxe City. Bag as watch out? Can't beat me. Looking for trouble? Better not lie. I'm a cool Pretty. dude. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. What? Soft bomb ash from Deluxe City. Tone? Bag as watch really? out? Can't beat me. Looking for oh trouble? My God. Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly <laughs> for an Asian guy. This entire hall just stuck in the pleasant ash from quiet that itself. City. Soon Back enough, it begins to turn and search for the source. Looking for Money trouble? Included. Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. Pretty <laughs> fly for an Asian oh, guy. Oh, jeez. My eyes start around a small crowd before tearing in and alone figuring crouch behind the same group of old people shaking off the dick crouch from his head. Pretty fly for an Asian guy. So, Soft bomb ash he's from facing away from City. me, fumbling Back with something in his out. hands. Can't beat me. Looking for trouble? Better not lie. I'm a cool dude. But I Pretty don't fly for an Asian guy. Who's back? Soft bomb ash from Deluxe City. <laughs> Why would Back as watch out. Can't beat me. Looking for <laughs> trouble? Better not lie. Anywhere. I'm a cool dude. Pretty fly for an, for Asian, an Asian guy. guy. Soft bomb ash from Deluxe City. Back as watch out. Can't beat me. Looking for trouble? Better not lie. I'm a cool After dude. Today, Pretty I'm fly really for an Asian not guy. To deal with this. Soft bomb ash from Deluxe City. Bag as watch out. Of all the Can't times to me. Look at Ashton Frey. Hello. What happens next is something I'll surely regret later for having not recorded. I did, though, so we're fine. Ah! Everything. <laughs> he jumps, lets out an undefined yelp, falling by his phone slipping out from his grip. It bounces from one hand to the other in this poor attempt to catch it before ultimately falling flat on the floor with a resounding clack. I kind of feel sorry for the phone. And the floor. But it's not every day that you can catch someone like Ash off guard and get a reaction. Oh, I see. Damn, his stupid detective senses. He's a detective? I'll take every ounce of victory I can get, no matter how small. Ha! She even don't look. An awkward pause passes between us. A blink. <clears throat> a cough. He makes a face. And then, in a too quick motion, he ducks and retrieves his abused gadget, full of grin threatens to break out from my lips. He doesn't meet my eyes when he straightens, but a flush has kept hip his neck and cheeks. Crept. In another universe, where we haven't known each other for five years and suffering through his teasing as in a day-to-day -day occurrence, chances are, I find that adorable. You still do, girl. This is endearing, even. Ooh. She's just... Unfortunately, this isn't that kind of worm. The way things are, I'm already content to see him out of his obnoxiously calm and collected disposition. Hello to you too, scaredy cat. Ash, I could what? stand to be greeted like a normal person, you know. What? And miss that look on your face? <laughs> no way! Oh man, I should have taken a picture. I am so honored you find this funny. Is that how you treat your guests? I think I need to talk to your supervisor. Talk to yourself? You aren't even a guest here. What are you doing here in the first place? For a moment, he looks like a cat that swallowed the cannery. 
Suddenly, checking every nook and cranny in his phone for any damage or scratches seems to be a more interesting activity than explaining himself. Ash? I could be looking to buy a house. A mansion? Yeah, why not? Did you see the view outside? It doesn't look haunted to me at all. He's messing with me. Ashton, I am not in the mood. What are you doing here? He chances a glimpse at some point behind me. The parlor? Curious, I follow his gaze, but before I can figure out what he has caught his attention, he places a hand on my shoulder and turns me back to face him. I just finished working on something, so I dropped by. I still don't see how his work has anything to do with why he's here. In my confused look, he drops the hand resting on my arm like he has touched something particularly hot and casually rubs the back of his neck. And I, uh, I said I'll see if I can pick you up. Turns out I can. Uh, free time and all. Alright, so confirmed he is uh, he's crushing on her too. Alright. So here, here I am. Uh, <laughs> figured you'd still be busy, and so I roamed around for a while. Oh, you should have mentioned that sooner. I was about to throw you out. Throw me? Hey, I was given a pamphlet. I think that makes me a legitimate client. We have mandatory sign-in sheets for clients, Ash. I didn't see your name on it. And you can't just roam around because it says open house. Normal people actually follow an etiquette here. Right, okay. I think I'll just go ahead and... No, wait. I wasn't really going to throw you out. Rose said... <laughs> Never mind. I was just about to leave anyway. Wait, what? Now? Something must have shown in my face because he pauses and gives me a long, hard stare. Sometimes, I forget how easy reading people is for Ash, given how he often looks as if everything around him is a core. Sure. <laughs> I avoid his eyes, hoping he'll drop the subject and won't ask any more questions. The last thing I want is to tell him what happened, especially the part about the letter. In fact, he's the last person on earth I'll ever think about telling it to if I can help it. Sure, he's a dependable guy. God knows how many times he had to help me even without me asking for it. But stuff like ghosts and the supernatural? He'll never believe those even if he hears it from a friend, except maybe if it's Becca. On a good day, the most harmless thing he'll do is give you an explanation why those things have no chance of ever being real. At worst, He's insufferable. He'll poke fun at you at every single chance he'll get. Ashhole. What did I ever do to him? He never does that to Becker. Like, because he's got a crush on you and he's just being a stupid boy. It's typical. <laughs> I can already imagine how things will go down the moment I spill a word of what I saw. Nope. Over my dead body. Before it catches his attention, I shove the letter deep into my bag. What's wrong? Nothing. Well, let's just go. Doesn't look like a nothing to me. We still have Zack's movie tonight, remember? It's still early. And didn't you say your shift will end around 5 or 6? What about- Hey, Isabella, wait up! change from a shifting atmosphere I decided to have mentioned. Ash's footsteps are quick behind me, the soles of his shoes jumping hard against the polished concrete in an awkward cadence as he rushes to catch up. He calls out once, twice. The mansion still looms in the background, whispers calling me back, shadows beckoning. Ugh. <laughs>